This is the Pebble Memory Scanning Task, also known as Sternberg's Task, or Sternberg's Memory Scanning Task. Um, in this task, you get a short sequence of letters, and then, like here, we see a D and an N, and you have to uh, see if new letters either are in this set or are not in this set. And uh, this is called Sternberg's Task because Saul Sternberg developed it in the 60s. He published a paper in Science showing that the time to search memory was a function of the number of items in memory, a slope of 37.9 <coughs> um, items per second, I guess. Or, no, 37.9 milliseconds per item. And uh, so you have to n know that these uh, data were collected with almost professional subjects, probably hundreds or thousands of trials, people who were very serious and who were in a completely quiet room and had a lot of practice. Um, and so we're going to see if we can produce a similar function with a very short practice time. Um, the way this one works is <coughs> it randomly chooses a two letters out of a set of letters that you can select. And if you get it right, it will um, move on to the next one. If you get it wrong, it will shows you the sequence again. So this is how, um, you know, it, it both encourages you to get it right because it's sort of annoying to have to see the sequence. And um, it also um, corrects you if you're wrong, so in case you've forgotten things. So this is certainly not um, the method used by Sternberg. But um, what, what this is going to do is it did, I think, 25 trials of 2. Now we're going to do 25 trials of length 4, GTNR. And it's actually not too difficult to do this. I can almost talk while I'm doing it without making too many errors. Let me, let me finish. Now I've forgotten which key is which. Okay, now the last one, we did a 2, a 4, and a 6. <coughs> um, it's going to go through, uh, by default, these three blocks two times. You can change that so you can go through multiple times. It's going to go through them in the same order, 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, with exactly the same letters um, each time. Um, in the stimulus, I think the the responses are randomly selected, so that maybe the first time you might want to get rid of the first block or look at the learning effect over time, because it gets sort of easier to remember. So um, let me do this one. Okay, STP. Now my error rate is going to be going up. I think I will go through this. I'll stop the recording and go through this and return when I'm done. All right, I just finished uh, two blocks of that. So I think it was 25 uh, present, 25 absent in each block of three. So there's 100 trials per block, um, two blocks of it. And I believe this averages over everything, all of the data not just um, session two, you can see um, it aggregates for you at the end to give you your basic statistics. Um, as the number of items increases from two to four to six, the time need to make the response goes up from 560 for present to, five, to 650 to 740, almost um, 100 milliseconds, a little less than 100 milliseconds <coughs> per two items. So, um, 
maybe this is a hundred. So it was about 50 millisecond, 50 milliseconds per item, roughly. And if we recall Sternberg, after extensive practice, um, showed a slope of about 40 milliseconds. Yeah, 40 milliseconds per item. So with my single trial while I was talking to you, my slope is a little longer, but it's on the same scale of magnitude. Um, accuracy here could be pretty bad for at least um, the six items, and maybe with more practice, both the accuracy would go up and the, probably the response times would go down and the, that um, slope would flatten out as well. I did experience that there were a lot of trials where my responses were extremely long, several seconds, that sort of didn't represent <coughs> the mean here. Um, so that is the basic operation of the task. Now if we want to look at what data are produced, um, in this task it will always um, in this, in the data folder of the task, it creates a log of what um, things went on, basically a timestamp, start complete, start complete, about when you um, started things with subject code here. So you could track back when subjects were run on particular computers and try to find things if things went wrong. For each subject, a folder is created and <coughs> um, this is a trial by trial log of data, and this is simply that um, table that's um, spit out at the end. So um, this is going to be, we can verify these numbers by looking at the data here. So here's the data. Um, you can see that how many trials it, it was, 300 trials. That's 301 rows, including the first row. So that was 100 trials per row. I'm sorry, 100 trials per block type, 50 trials per block because the blocks were repeated twice, and each one had um, half target, half foil, or you know, half present, half absent. Um, this tells you the stimulus, the set, the trial, how long the stimulus was what the response was, whether it was correct in the response time. And again, you can see some of these are two seconds, some of them are 500 milliseconds, so there's quite a range here. And we can, I guess we can recreate that table using a pivot table. So I can insert a pivot table. If you're using Microsoft Excel, you do it a little differently, but it's basically basically the same setup. I'm going to find the average RT by the target FOIL value and the length. Maybe I want to also do um, block, but I guess block is not recorded here directly. So These values should be, maybe they're flipped, but um, 615, 562, so that's all it is, is taking the average. You can see these same values appear here. If I were to try to plot this, um, we could maybe look at the pattern. That doesn't look very interesting chart type or we'll do one of these and for you know two four and six this is quite similar to um, the results Sternberg produced let me see let's compare this I'm guessing I'm a lot slower for two his values were about 450 for two my values were about 600 for four his values were 550 for six they were 600 so overall I'm slower because I've done this just once 
with only a little bit of practice on the, those trials and I was probably distracted and um, actually uh, but over, overall the slope is actually pretty compatible it's a little slower and we see like the findings like its findings no systematic difference between target and foil which was used to suggest a serial exhaustive search process. Um, okay, so that's the data that come out. That's how you'd probably interpret the data. You'd probably be looking at those slopes. Now, there's a few parameters you can adjust here. So, um, really, there's three lengths you can use, and I call them length one, length two, and length three. And you could create whatever lengths you want. You could do 1, 5, and 10, or whatever. Um, but there's only three block types. You can't do five lengths or six lengths like Sternberg made. And if you want to do that, you sort of have to do this separately. But if you have a, ser a more serious um, experiment like that, you might actually be wanting to do a bunch of length 2, a bunch of length 3, a bunch of length 4 separately. Um, you could repeat 2, 2, and 2, and... You know, do the same length each time, and um, every time it would pick a separate pair of two letters to use. When it repeated for the second round, it would use the same set of three. But that's a way to sort of have a variety of things. That design is actually not too different than a related task, which is called the Schiffer and Schneider memory automaticity task, which looks at how this changes this slope changes with practice. Um, that's on that's available in Pebble under Schiffer and Schneider or under memory automaticity. Okay, so rounds. This says how many rounds did I do in in the task I showed you? There were two rounds. That means um, <coughs> there were two blocks of this, two blocks of this, two blocks of this. But these were in order. Um, this actually, if you um, dictates whether to resample or reuse those. So if you want to look at learning of the same materials over and over again, you set this to one, but if you want it recreated, you set it to zero, and then trials per block is by default 25. Um, this is probably uh, fine for something like this. Um, you know, if you want a serious, to do serious practice, multiple sessions, um, you can increase rounds, increase blocks, and probably have multiple training between, um, multiple other training and rest between that. And finally, you can determine which are the characters you really want to use. If you just want to use the same set, um, you could do this. You could change this to be a small, smaller. You need at least, um, well, you need, if you are using six, you need more, more than six here because it takes the foils from here as well. Um, so you just have to be careful about how many foils and what th their nature. Okay, so that is the parameters. There's a few um, custom translations you can do. Header, footer, uh, or two different headers for instructions. And an in, uh, instruction in debriefing. These would be easy to fix, to change, to map how you're using the task in your lab or uh, if you wanted to translate it to a new um, language. Um, let's see. I think that's uh, that covers the task pretty well. Um, again, there's a if you were interested in learning and how how that slope changes over time with repeated practice of the same set, um, you could look at the memory out memory automaticity task, which is a version of this task that was done later. Um, anyway, that is the Sternberg scanning task, or the Sternberg short-term memory task. Um, so thank you for watching.